Do you love God? Why, why do you I'm take, asking you. Why do you take for granted that I believe there is I'm asking you. Do you why love God? I love something that doesn't exist. Oh, oh, do you exist? I exist. But God says you don't. Actually, I, I believe in alternative science. I don't believe in establishment science. Really? No. Uh, establishment science are they... is based on theory and lies. I don't believe in that. So you don't believe I jump up or come down? That's scientific. Where did the universe come from? Where did the earth come from? I'm still asking myself that question. That doesn't mean I accept that the supernatural entity created the earth. Why not? Moses sinned because God. No, they were in, because Jesus was Jewish. Hallelujah. <laughs> So. No, God says so. so. Oh, but are you a sinner? Yes, I know. You say that God said so. Yeah, God told Moses, for example, right? Like, let me give you an example. Those two young ladies, right, were having a nice discussion about sin, right? And she said, "I've never sinned." He's a Gentile. You're Jewish. He's lost. I know you're in the you're in the same group. You are a sinner. Oh my goodness, that's... Okay, you're not a sinner. So I said, okay, what about... Let me finish. Let me finish what I'm saying. I said, what about Moses then? Did Moses sin? Moses sinned, even though he was one of the great men of God, because he did not speak to the rock. He hid it. Do you love God? Why, why do you I'm take, asking you. Why do you take for granted that I believe there is? I'm asking you. Do you why love would God? I love something that doesn't exist. Oh, oh, do you exist? I exist. But God says you don't. To you. No, because you're being foolish now. Why? I'm, I'm foolish because I don't happen to believe in what you believe. No, 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 not what I believe. No, 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 no. The, God says the fool in his heart has said there's no God. So, no, but, you, but you're not wise. You're not wise. You've been foolish. Okay? I'm being foolish yes. because I don't happen to believe in what you believe. Okay, tell me why not? I don't believe in God. Why not? Because I'm a science-based lady. Really? Really? And to me, a Bible, a book is not evidence. That's funny. Uh, ever heard of Sir Isaac Newton? Sorry? Uh, ever heard of Sir Isaac Newton? Yes, I have. What about Mr. Pasteur? Okay, fair enough. Because eventually I discovered that Darwin was a Satanist, so why would I believe him? Yeah, but what about modern science that you hold dear to? Where did no, that start from? I don't actually, I, I believe in alternative science. I don't believe in establishment science. Really? No, uh, establishment science are they, is based on theory and lies. I don't believe in that. So you don't believe I jump up or come down? That's scientific. Yeah, that's scientific. Yes? Okay. Right? So there's cause and effect. Right. Yeah, sure, mate. Right. That's what science does in the real world. Right. Cause, effect, and you, you progress. You, you do the methodology, you repeat it, and find out if the flow is in it, then refine it. Well, where did the universe come from? Where did the earth come from? I'm still asking myself that question. That doesn't mean I accept that the supernatural entity created the earth. Why not? Because I don't, my beliefs are not based on a book. Uh, okay, let's forget the book for a moment, right? You're on planet Earth. You're on Earth, right? Yes. Where did the earth come from? Well, one day I will discover that. <laughs> that doesn't mean that, again, I believe that the earth was created by a supernatural entity. Okay, what if the one who made the earth actually came to planet Earth and told us he did it? Would you believe him? If that, if that happened one day, then yes. But then it, I would have proof. Okay, Jesus said he created the world. Do you think he's a liar? Well, again, you believe in Jesus because Jesus existed according to a book. No, according to history. According to history. According to history written by who? Somebody uh, wrote that history. Uh, actually... Why, why would you trust whoever it is that wrote that history? Actually, I, I teach history, right? And what we like to do is look at what the other side says about people, okay? Now, the people who write about Jesus the most are the eyewitnesses.
Have you read Pliny, St. Candace? No, you haven't. I have, okay? When I read his book, he's writing the Roman history of the Roman world. Let me finish what I'm saying. Hang on. Do you want to know what I have found? Or he just want to cut me short? Right. Pliny the Younger is a Roman government officer. Okay? He's not a Christian. He's not Jewish. He doesn't believe anything of that nature. What he does, though, is write historical narratives about what happened in the Roman Empire so that his audience would have a good notion, oh, this is where we started from, this is where we are. So while he's doing this, he also mentions as an incidental part, oh, there was a man called Jesus Christ, okay? He was crucified under one of our procurators, Pontius Pilate. So, and that is amazing. Why? Because it's independent evidence which corroborates what the New Testament has written down already. Now, let's go further. They are Greeks. They are, well, why? Why do, why do you want to doubt Pliny? You haven't even read him. You're already, you're already judging a guy. You haven't even read the book. Yes? Oh, so what, so what part of the history are you going to believe in? The one that my common sense I should believe in. <laughs> and my common sense is based on evidence. Right. Was there World War I? Using my common sense right. on what I see. Really? And how people how do you... I study, I study human relationships. Really? Is that all? Right. What I base my well, you're, but you're not being historical. I could, what does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what it that means. Right, okay, where's the dead body of Jesus Christ? Because he's an historical person. Yes, ma'am. There are some like investigations that look at the evidence. Right. Everything that he's claiming, and that's why we're all discussing about the existence of Jesus. And the Jewish people don't believe in Jesus, but obviously there is like a, a investigation lounge that you can actually look at the evidence and look at why and why there are arguments that support that he actually existed. And even like some people say, yeah, there is evidence that there is evidence that he existed, but there is no evidence that he actually resurrected. Okay. So there is a, another evidence that suggests and, you know, supports that he actually, you know, they haven't found his body and there is a lot of evidence that supports that. So there is actually a book that is called um, A Case of Christ. That is, it's a really, really rich book. It's, um, they made a movie out of it about someone who actually, you know, is a scientific person who actually look into the evidence and say, um, okay, this exists, this exists, there is proof of this existence, there is proof that, you know, there, there is proof that he was there at that time and age and, you know, in history. So I think it's really good to look at the evidence, but because if the evidence wasn't there, we wouldn't be like 2,000 years after still discussing about this man. Or, well, this is something that I really, really found maybe myself in. Who knows if the evidence was also invented? Exactly, you know? because, because I, so basically there is also another book about the, the, the translation, the history of translations of the Bible and how it was translated from Hebrew to all other other languages. And then there is also another person that investigated so, I mean, Are you telling me they're studying if anything got lost in translation? Is that what exactly. So, uh, so all of that has been also tested and investigated and there is evidence into that as well. And I think it's really good to look into that to just see where the arguments lie and see why there is actually evidence that you that know this that person supports, existed. Yeah, that he yeah. existed in that support. But also more than that as well, it's not it's not only that he existed but also the message that whoever wrote the message, he was Jesus, he said that, but whoever wrote the message is the message that persisted over time that we're still discussing today, messages like being born again or resurrection or messages of salvation and things like that. But the message, why people were still discussing that, why this man is still being changed the world. until now, but it's just, it's just you know, and... But there is obvious, there is also scientific, you know, there is a lot of evidence about that. But if you look into this and just look at the evidence, it's not, it's not because, it's not, and, and I agree with you, because I understand, I'm like someone very rational. There's, there's a reason why I'm skeptical, because so-called messages also get taught in academia, in our educational system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that in the kind of society and establishment we live in, academia, 
is about manipulating and brainwashing people. It's about conditioning them. And education should be about a leading out of what's already there, not about the artificial implanting of ideas. So school is also about messages. That doesn't mean that those messages are good messages and they're not there to manipulate us. Yeah, but, but I think... But I think the reason why, well, sometimes I come to speak at Bona, but the reason why is because nobody, really nobody is really like supposed to know. I, I have my, like, you have the truth, I have the truth. But the other person, obviously, is not the truth. You, the, the thing about the truth is that it has to be accepted. And whenever it's not accepted, it's like, it's like when you say, I don't believe it, even like the God that we believe in, because I believe in God, you know, but the God that we believe in, even he asks for permission, like, he's, he's not going to just invade your life and say, believe in me, or things like that, but it's more of like a personal yeah, choice. Religion, as far as I can see, all religions, not just Christian, Catholic, Muslim, are based, the way that they try to coerce people into believing is through guilt, because according to religion, you're born a sinner, and fear, because if you don't end up believing in that religion, you're going to hell. So based on guilt and fear, I'm sorry, I'm not going to trust that. Well, and it doesn't mean I don't respect you or him. I respect that people choose to be religious. If that is the life formula that works for them and they're happy that way, then I respect that. What I don't respect is being for somebody to push me to believe in the same thing, whether I like it or not. I want them to respect my way of living as well, even if it happens to be atheism. Yeah, but, but you're missing the point, though. You're missing the point. No, not if, if, is not missing the if point. I drive, if, I, if you drive a car in Britain, right, you follow the highway codes, right, there's strict rules. And that, that should make you fearful that you don't follow them, you're going to cause a crash or be on fault, right? So that fear element is necessary for you to follow what is true and faithful on the road. I'm only talking about something on, on the highway codes. And not, and what I'm pointing out is that sometimes it's healthy to have a healthy respect or fear of not doing wrong. A child, if you tell a child, respect don't put your fear. hand by the... Well, it's not a concept. When I was a child, my mom told me, don't put your hand on the stove. Otherwise, you're going to get burnt. Okay? I would disagree with you in that because in that case, there are two types of fear. Yes. One is the fear of God. Yes, which is, which is healthy. Is yeah. Yeah, fear. those are phobias. Yeah. So, but another fear is the one that I feel it's healthy. When we when we try to put fear into people, just to believe in into in something or fear, because actually we don't believe because we we are afraid. We believe because of the love that was taught to us right. by Jesus. Because even He said. People will believe, not because I'm capable of feeling love and empathy and sympathy for others without being religious. And I can still feel. Well, a lot of people are very nice, they don't have to be Christian. It's, it's, not, being, yeah, so it's not being religious, it's basically believing in something is not necessarily be, being religious is being doing something or doing the same thing all the time you know and it's like getting into a sort of structure yeah. but actually believing in your heart because not every um, every belief not every religious person you know what I'm not no 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 I'm an atheist Trevor leave her alone <laughs> Terry Terry no. Anyway, I'm going to keep going on, but thank you for talking to me. That's okay. And thank you for, you stopped being defensive against me, which I like. I, I'm not being defensive. So thank you. Thank you, brother. Okay, God bless you. Thank you. Okay. okay. I'll see you. Bye-bye. God bless you. You're doing a good job. We'll try to. You're doing a good job for the kingdom of God, right? And he encouraged our hearts. Oh, yeah. He, he, he puts us in the places that we should be. I like, know, it makes people think. I, and, you know, yeah. and, but I think... The most important thing that people, because when you don't know Jesus, you don't know what yeah. true love is, right? You don't know his teachings, you don't know. Exactly. The most important thing is that they know that you are not angry, but you are passionate about yeah. Jesus. Sometimes people listen to that, think yeah. that okay, this guy is crazy. <laughs> no, he's just passionate about what he's saying. I know. Yeah, yeah, so 
just so they, they get, to get they get their communications all wrong. To get into it, right? But it's like, so I do, I do believe, I do believe you know yeah. that you're doing a great job. Well, right? thank you. Well, thank was you. the Lord for help and wisdom, yeah. because yeah. a lot of people can get a wrong ideas. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was so shocked by the, those Jewish kids. You know, that's a, so sorry for them. They're reading Isaiah 53. And and I know for I know, a fact yeah, yeah. rabbis don't like reading that passage. It's only recent because of the internet that Jewish kids are reading it for the first time. So why didn't nobody and read it? It's a shame. Yeah. For, for the people of God. <laughs> I know. God that makes me so. And I'm thinking, oh, my heart <laughs> this is, is breaking. This is in my heart. I know. How the people of God reject, yeah. reject his own. You know, I know. That's why I wore this. Own. And she and came to me and says, why are you wearing that? I said, because Jesus is Jewish. She goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> and they go, well, they can't understand it. I said, you've got to understand the Bible comes from you guys. We're the ones in debt to you. The other way around, you know. Yeah. You should and be teaching is, us. And they have, they have an inheritance. I know. That is amazing. Oh. But even the enemy is trying to stop, you, them. You stop them from yeah. believing in the you know, with the promises that yeah. was born from exactly. Own people. Well, I'm hoping that when we they are go Gentiles, home, but they are, they I'm just hoping, sir, when they go home, they're going to read that passage against us. Was this really true? We're talking about Zion here, or is it an individual? <laughs> because I've read testimonies of Jews who become Christians or fulfilled the psychic Jews. They said, This is the past that led me to the Lord. I couldn't grasp, I, I, it was not about Israel's sufferings, about one individual. He's the one who's been punished. This is, What's going on here? And so when they go home, I hope they read it again. Because they would, and I said, we're reading your Bible. Don't jump around. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can't believe that. I expect that from the atheists or whatever. But, but not, from not from the Jewish guys, you know. You would think, okay, let's read it carefully. Fine, fine, okay. You know, but, oh, anyway, the Lord will sort it out. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Dr. Van, the yeah. big rapper, what happened there, Doctor? Oh, today was a wonderful day. We met a lot of different people. And uh, there were Jewish kids came up and were reading the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, when it talks about who has, who has the arm of the Lord been uh, uh, f uh, lifted up. And then the whole passage is about the Messiah, whom we trust is Jesus, Yeshua, who died, suffered, was afflicted, was crushed, and then it was buried and raised from the dead. Hey. Uh, and these two kids couldn't grasp that. And, and my heart is going, I don't believe what I'm seeing. But you know what? The first line of Isaiah 53 says, Who has believed our report? Right. And that's the Isaiah to the Jewish people. Yeah. And that's sad in 2021. You see that reflected. But we're praying that those kids go home and they go back and read it. Even to just say, let me prove that black man wrong. <laughs> Thank you, God bless you. Thank you, Commander. We love you, Commander. <laughs> <laughs>